Welcome to our deep dive, everyone. Um, today we're tackling unconscious patience. Yeah, definitely a high stakes situation. Yeah, and one that uh, you know every ER doctor is going to face in their career. Absolutely, and you know, I think having a systematic approach is really key here. Okay, so let's say uh, we're in the ER, right? And an unconscious patient is wheeled in, right? Where do we even start? You always got to start with the ABCs. Right, the ABCs? Airway, breathing, circulation. It's like a triage system. Yeah. You know, like if there's a fire, put the fire out first before you start like looking around for damage. Makes sense. <laughs> but, you know, in the heat of the moment, it's easy to get flustered. Absolutely. What are some ways to make sure we don't miss anything super important? So one thing is a structured approach. Yeah. Like <laughs> the ABCDE method, it's like a mental checklist. Yeah. So you and your team are all on the same page yeah. and you're not going to skip a vital step. That's so key. <laughs> I feel like every time I use a checklist, I catch something I would have missed. Yeah, exactly. So we've stabilized the ABCs. <laughs> right. What's next? Then we need to assess the level of consciousness. Okay. So we're going to use the Glasgow Coma Scale. The GCS. Uh-huh. You know, it's funny. We all learn it. Yeah, we learn it. But I feel like sometimes we just like go through the motions we'll without really thinking about it. Exactly. And along with the GCS, don't forget the pupils. Oh, the pupils. Right. So how are they reacting to light? What's their size? Yeah. That gives you a window into the brainstem. Could you give us an example of how that might change what we do? Yeah, sure. So let's say you have someone who's unconscious and they have pinpoint pupils. Okay. That could suggest opioid toxicity. Okay. And then you're going to need to give naloxone right away. Yeah. So it's like a small detail, but it could be life-saving. And there's so many other things that can cause pinpoint pupils. Exactly. It's like a whole differential there. Yeah, it's like you're looking right into the brain. So we've got the ABCs, the GCS, but, and we've looked at the pupils. Uh-huh. What's the next absolutely essential thing we need to do? Okay, especially in the ER. Yeah. Finger stick blood sugar. Oh, of course, hypoglycemia. So easy to miss. Yeah. But it's such a quick fix if you catch it early. Yeah. Just give them some sugar and they're good to go. Exactly. Okay. It's amazing how often that happens. Right. It's like that saying, when you hear hoofbeats, think horses, not zebras. Yeah, you know. Sometimes the simplest explanation is the right one. Exactly. Keep it simple. All right. So we've got ABCs, GCS pupils, and the finger stick glucose. Yep. Those first few minutes. So much information. Yeah. And so much you can do in those first few minutes. Yeah, crucial moment. It really sets the stage for everything else. Absolutely. Now we're going to put on our detective hats All right. and really try to figure out what's going on. Yeah, let's get into the diagnostics. Yep. Let's dig in. Okay. All right. So we've stabilized the patient, gotten some initial information. Now it's time to really dig in. All right. So we're putting on our detective hats, trying to figure out what caused this coma. Yeah. What's the underlying cause? Exactly. So where do we even begin with that? Okay, so our sources all point to three main diagnostic tools. Okay. Blood tests, imaging studies, and an EEG. Blood tests seem like a good place to start. Yeah, you can get so much information from a simple blood test. So what are we specifically looking for here? Well, we want to rule out any metabolic disturbances. Right. Infections, toxicities, mm -hmm. you know, anything that could be contributing to the coma. So we're checking electrolytes looking for signs of infection, mm -hmm. and screening for drugs and toxins. Exactly. You're getting a broad overview of what's going on. Okay, blood tests are done. What about imaging? Yeah, the study guide mentions CT scans and MRIs. Right. And those let us actually visualize the brain ah. so we can look for any structural abnormalities. So we're thinking bleeding stroke tumors. Yeah, exactly. Now, I know when the ER time is of the essence. Right. So is a CT or an MRI better in that setting? Usually a CT is our go-to in the ER okay. because it's so quick. Yeah, that makes sense. And it can often give us the information we need right away. You know, if there's a bleed or a large stroke, right we'll now. see it right there on the CT. So we might need an MRI later for more detail. Exactly. But in an emergency, the CT is usually enough. Okay, so we've got blood tests for the metabolic picture and imaging for the structural view. What about the EEG? Yeah, so the EEG is looking at the electrical activity in the brain. Okay. And that's particularly useful for things like seizures. Oh, right, because sometimes seizures can be subtle. Exactly. You, you might not even see any outward signs. Especially if the patient's already unconscious. Right, so the EEG can be really helpful in those cases. And can it tell us anything else? Yeah, it can help us assess the depth of the coma. Okay. And get a sense of overall brain functions. And then once we have the cause figured out, we can start thinking about treatment. That's the next step. All right. 
Let's dive into treatment strategies. Okay. Okay, so we've stabilized our patient. We've got all this diagnostic information. All right. Now let's talk about how we actually treat them. Okay. Yeah. So let's say our workup shows hypoglycemia. Okay. What do we do? Give them glucose. Simple as that. Sometimes. Sometimes the easiest solution is the best one. Right. But what if it's something more complicated? Like, let's say a narcotic overdose. Okay. Then we give naloxone. Right, to reverse the effects. Exactly. So each cause kind of has its own specific treatment. Yeah. But what about something like a stroke or a brain bleed? So those are going to be more complex. Yeah. Those often require a multidisciplinary approach, okay. you know, involving neurology, neurosurgery, critical care. Right. And the sp specific treatment is really going to depend on, you know, the location and severity of the bleed or the stroke. It sounds like those cases can get pretty tricky. They can. Yeah. But no matter what the cause is, yeah. there's one thing that's always important. Supportive care. Right. Supportive care. Yeah. Could you just remind us what that includes? Sure. So it's basically like creating the best possible environment for the body to heal. Okay. So that means things like maintaining a stable temperature, making sure they're getting enough fluids and nutrition, preventing pressure ulcers, managing pain. So it's like we're building a good foundation for recovery. Exactly. Even while we're addressing the specific cause of the coma. And of course, we can't forget about communication. Right. Especially with the family. Absolutely. You have to keep the family updated, involved in decision making. It's such a stressful situation for them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So we need to treat them with the same compassion that we treat the patient. I agree. Well, I feel like this has been a really great deep dive. Yeah. I've learned a lot. Good. I feel much more prepared to deal with these kinds of patients now. That's great to hear. You know, one thing that really stuck with me from the ClinMed article was this idea of using simulation training. Oh, yeah. To really practice these skills. That's a great idea. You know, because these are high stakes situations. Yeah. And it would be amazing to be able to practice them in a safe environment. Absolutely. Where there are no real consequences. Yeah. You know, just got that experience. Exactly. So I think that's a great question for our listeners to think about. Yeah. How can we use simulation to get better at managing unconscious patients? Definitely something to consider. Well, that's all the time we have for today. So thank you for joining us on this deep dive into unconscious patient management. Thanks for joining us. It was a pleasure being here. Until next time, stay curious, stay engaged, and keep learning. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comments section.